We started uh, roughly a month ago or so, and uh, so we are in an interesting phase. We've got shaping going on. We still have some stripping uh, of, of holes that we haven't touched yet that's going on. You'll see a truck coming by right now doing some stripping. We've actually put some irrigation in the ground. So a month from now, we'll actually be doing some grassing. So it's an exciting time. We've got a lot of different things going on at the same time. Let's start episode two with a quick recap of episode one. The Golden Gate Park golf course, which dates back to 1951, had great bones but was suffering from overgrowth, outdated irrigation, and burnt down infrastructure. When the city decided to rebuild the clubhouse, Dan Burke, CEO of the First Tee of San Francisco, extended his lease for 15 more years. Quite frankly, he needed the space. We have more kids, sadly, on wait lists right now than we have in our programs, right? Burke's plan was to safeguard access for the first tee, but he also wanted to improve the playing field for the kids and the community. Not unlike what Sandy Tatum did at Harding Park, Burke promised the city he would get private funding to upgrade the golf. Underserved kids, especially in a city like San Francisco, the resources for them are going away by the second. You have all these systemic problems. Well, it's time for us really to lean in even more and have as much impact as we can in the long term, capitalizing on the popularity of golf. Uh, our donors are committed to our success in this community and really doing this really unique, incredible project is a byproduct of all those kind of factors coming together at once. The deal got done and Burke called Jay Blasey a local designer who had been digging his way out from under the shadow of Robert Trent Jones Jr., his former employer. Blasey donated his fee to be involved. And needless to say, Burke is a big Blasey fan. Upcoming rock star. The impact on the community at large is really at the forefront of Jay's mind when he's thinking about design and the enjoyment of the game for everybody, not just a, a small subset of, of who, the people that play golf. Burke and Blasey brought in Josh Lewis as the project manager and expert on all things agronomy and irrigation. Lewis has over 20 years of experience growing grass at some of the most notable courses and resorts on the West Coast. You know, my career started at Bandon Dunes building golf in sand on the ocean. And it's like 25 years later, we're like, oh, look, we're building great golf and sand on the ocean and we're doing it for public access. We're doing it for kids that want to come learn the game. You know, they not only get to learn the game, they get to learn the game on a really relevant golf course in a great city, great location. Josh has been Winston Wolf, you know. Um, need to get there in 20 minutes and he gets there in three. You know, um, we had some hurdles at the start because of a very tough winter, but now we're really cranking and I think very soon we'll start seeing even more fruits of labor soon and Josh has done a remarkable job at making sure we've we've kept going under some pretty tough circumstances. I got to know Josh, he, he was the superintendent for the US Open at Chambers Bay and so uh, he was there for a number of years and I got to know him through that and we became close friends and he's really been the key to this whole thing in terms of execution of the project. And we've been throwing some curveballs, you know, we've got great weather here in this part of the country and we've had great weather for five or six years but the worst three week stretch we've had happened the day we started. So we've had to call some audibles and, and we wouldn't be able to get where we're going and hit our grassing windows and things like that if Josh weren't involved. So Golden Gate Park Golf Course had assembled its big three. And as of March 6th, they got to work. 
One of the things that we were most excited about was knowing that the sand was underneath here. We did our due diligence, we tested it all, we found out it's usually about a foot below the surface. And so we've scraped off the stuff that's on top, all that organic, and so now we're down to the sand. And having that sand is going to allow us to use fescue as our primary turf. So we're gonna have one height of cut, so the tees, the fairway, the green surrounds will all be one height of cut with the fescue. And fescue on sand is the recipe for firm and fast golf. And so that, we think, is gonna be ideal for beginners and, not, and avid golfers alike. It's a, a turf that doesn't require a lot of water, doesn't require a lot of input. So from a sustainability standpoint, we think it's the right fit for San Francisco and Golden Gate Park, and it's the perfect fit for playing golf. By mid-April, they were driving trucks and shapers in and around a 20-acre sandbox, and there was some selective and carefully scrutinized tree removal. They used to start on what is now the sixth tee, and you ended on what is now the fifth green. Blasi flipped the order of the routing and walk, and you now start on what used to be the fifth tee and end on what was the fourth green. Time now for a tour, hole by hole, of what they're scraping out of the ground and a glimpse into what's in Blasi's mind and his design. We start out with an uphill hole that, that's kind of a medium length par three with a green setting with a, a kind of a majestic cypress tree behind the green, a very friendly contours to help get you started. Uh, and from that hole, you walk up and to your right and you get to the high point of the property. So you get up high, get this big view. You play kind of down into, into the woods, into the forest for the second hole, uh, which has a neat kind of big green with a plateau in the middle. From there, you veer to your left. Again, you're kind of nestled in the woods uh, uh, for the third hole is a little bit uh, longer hole, tougher green setting. So that will be one of the two or three tougher holes on the course, kind of pitches left to right. And then off of that green, you, you get to the fourth hole. And I think that's gonna be another exciting spot for people. Fourth hole is a short uphill hole, and the green is a big punch bowl. And the first and the fourth greens are actually connected. It's one big green. And so uh, I think as people get up to that fourth green and they're gonna see their ball you know, rolling all over the place, over the slopes, there'll be lots of hole-in-ones on that hole. I think climbing up to that green, and then you're on that green and you look out and you see the Pacific Ocean, I think that's gonna be an exciting place for people. From there, you walk off to the fifth tee and you're coming back to the clubhouse. A downhill, longer par three. We've made the hole a little bit shorter so that there's a, a room between the clubhouse and, and the fifth green for safety purposes. It'll allow us to have a practice putting green that we don't have today. Off to the sixth hole and we're playing back up the hill to a green that kind of sits at the toe of a big dune. And so, um, you know, the, the big dune behind the ninth at, at Cypress Point is kind of a famous spot. McKenzie routed a number of golf holes to go to that dune and then play off of that dune. And uh, well, a little different in scale, we hope that the backdrop to the sixth hole here will have that same feel. And then we begin our kind of descent to the finish. So seven is a downhill hole. It's got our only formal bunker. Uh, it's a little bit of a horseshoe green that wraps around this bunker. Uh, so one small little bunker in the middle there. Uh, very friendly contours around that green. And then you get over to the eighth, which is probably our shortest hole on the course. That's the one that you can putt down. Uh, so that's the, the hole that will play anywhere from you know 65 up to 100 yards. And, you can putt if you want to. Very wild green, lots of different unique hole locations down there. But again, we think that'll be a spot that's gonna be great fun for people to see the ball moving and, and ro going over some fun undulations. And then you get to the ninth, which is a, a longer hole, kind of a, a corridor uh, between some beautiful cypress trees. You've got the ocean off to your left, uh, and that will be a compelling finish too with some interesting uh, feeding contours near the green uh, and perfect way to cap off and head back to the clubhouse and hang out. And hopefully when you walk off the ninth green, you're ready to go again. Blasi mentioned the clubhouse. The timing of that renovation is already emerging as a concern. An October 1st reopening isn't looking realistic. 
but that could also work in the favor of the grow-in of the golf course. Next up. So we've got about half the holes shaped. So in the next few weeks, we're gonna try and get the rest of the holes shaped. We're gonna probably break the, the property into two zones for grassing. And so hopefully we'll do our first wave of grass, grassing in the first half of May, and then the second wave of grassing right at the end of May. And so the next few weeks are gonna be an exciting time with shaping, irrigation installation, uh, getting, getting everything cleared out and getting uh, ready for grassing. Uh, it, it all comes together really quick. It's a small property at the end of the day. 